Hi everybody, it's Kimberly. Welcome back to the Illumin Guru. Thank you to all of the new subscribers. It's so fun this time of year. I found historically that uh, there's always like a new wave of followers and new twin flames, um, new uh, waves of those on the Ascension journey who are finding these videos, not just mine, but everybody's. And there always seems to be growth around this time of year in particular. Um, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary on YouTube, which is absolutely crazy to me. So if you guys are thinking about starting something, your own channel, your own whatever it is, do it. Don't hesitate. If you're doing it and you just help one person, it's worth it. And that should be your reasoning behind it. I'm in the process of... Um, going to be launching something that's going to be a huge tool for those of you along the Ascension journey, not just Twin Flames, but everyone's, maybe even your friends and family members too, but I'm not ready to make the announcement just yet, so um, I'll be ready to talk and share about it probably within the next month, so stay tuned for that, okay? It's going to be really, really, something really cool for everybody. Um, so this is today's message is I'm going to focus on how we navigate our ascension journey. And we're going to talk about this through the new moon in Taurus, which is happening on uh, May 15th. And Taurus brings us a very grounded energy. And I want to talk not just about how we are um, needing to ground into the earth, but how we can ground into our spiritual practices in a better, more effective way along the Ascension journey. So I will talk a little bit about how I work and um, just overall um, learning and tools and things that we need in the Ascension journey because these are the things that ground us. So as you're ascending you should be really curious and really, most of you are searching for answers. Most of you are doing a lot of healing work inside. Um, and you're watching a ton of videos. And those of you who are more aligned with the Ascension journey um, and understanding that that is the process of the Twin Flame path, you will be aligning with Ascension tools rather than watching readings about outcome reunion with Twin Flames. The only way that you're going to get the outcome that you want is by following the Ascension journey and coming into wholeness or into oneness with yourself. So watching videos all day about outcomes or, you know, union isn't going to help you. Um, it may provide temporary relief. It may provide like something that you want to hear being resonated back or mirrored back for you but it's not going to really aid the ascension. So one of the misconceptions is that, you know, um, you know, as I go up, I, I feel myself, I fall out of it. I come back down. I, you know, I take 10 steps back and that never really happens. You're always expanding. So I want you to know if you're along, if you're navigating along this journey and you're learning and you're growing and you come out of alignment or you, you know, you, you, you are practicing. You are um, basically view it as like you are an Ascension student on Earth school or in Earth school and you are graduating to new layers. So if we think of like, think of Ascension as like the higher dimensions, you could look at it as like clouds or you could look at it as like a ladder or you could look at it as like different rooms um, ascending up. But either way, when you get up to the next cloud or to the next room or to the next dimension, you're not going to unlearn those tools and you're not going to fall back down. But what happens is we'll go back into some of the default settings of our programming, of our wounding, until we practice, practice, practice and really, really get it right and really get to a place where it becomes part of who we are, where we let the false layers of ourselves fall away so we can express authentically who we are. And that I'm talking about, you know, your false masculine, your imbalanced or unhealthy feminine expression, the not being in your power, the um, reacting or reactivity from your wounds, the societal, ancestral, and familial programming that's all ingrained in us. 
all those layers of things need to be uh, cleared out, so to speak, and repatterned and reprogrammed and beliefs shifted so we can find the truest expression of who we are and find that alignment within ourselves to stay in alignment, right? Because that's, that's the thing. And I think a lot of you get discouraged when you fall out, but just know that that's part of the process. It's like, that, that is part of it. That's how we get good at staying in alignment. That's how we get good at um, and how we get better at knowing where we need to go energetically, where we need to be uh, within our own power. Okay, we're needing to come out of it to see the contrast, to see where we err, to see where there's still stuff to polish and, and work on. So with that said, if any of you are needing assistance with these tools, a lot of people ask me, I got a couple of questions over email this week. I like, what's the best way to work with you? Um, you know, what is soul coaching? And soul coaching, and I've said it before, but those of you who are new and you're not familiar with it, it's just, it's a very progressive way of working through your healing. It's much more, let's say, progressive um, than traditional therapy, I like to say, because I use intuitive guidance and um, I, I pick up on your energies, I read the energy, so you don't necessarily need to start, you know, telling your story from day one. <laughs> um, and so that, because that can take a lot of energy when you do that in, um, in some of the more traditional modalities. So we kind of cut into the energy and in that I'm able to mirror back for you gently sort of where there are things out of alignment. And then we hone in on the pieces that um, seem to have sub layers that are probably stemming from a root that you haven't explored yet. So maybe you know this surface cause or like this kind of general thing that you've worked on in your healing, but you're not like getting to the root to clean it out. And then you're not sure of how to integrate and how to align. So I work on all those pieces with you. We, you know, I help you um, call up specific memories. I use the intuitive guidance with that. So if you're not sure, if you have things that are suppressed, we can usually um, dig right into that. I also do, for those of you who are needing it, wanting it, and aren't uh, aware that I do it, um, you can see on the website that I offer the past life regression, but I also offer childhood regression. So we can bring you back to the womb or we can bring you back to childhood. Um, I actually have done a few sessions recently and I have a new testimonial to put up. So I'll try to remember to put that on the site for you guys. Um, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll segment it into a separate service in case any of you have suppressed feelings and um, memories that you haven't been able to access and might want to try that route. Um, it's very healing, it's very therapeutic, and it can pr provide a lot of like the clues or cues or like the connect the dots that you're needing to really like gel your healing and integrate. Um, so that's pretty much what we do in soul coaching, and that's done through, it's, it's all what you need. No two sessions are exactly the same. I adapt to what you're needing and what I'm hearing from you and energetically what we need to clear. Um, but you can pretty much rest assured that within three to five sessions, you're going to clear out some of your major blocks and be on your way to like the next level of your ascension. Um, it's okay to just do a session. It's okay to just do one session. That's okay. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll be able to accomplish quite a bit, but it's always good to like have a session, step away, do the processing, do more healing, do more research, do, you know, find other, you know, modalities or healers that help you in the same area and then come back to the table with your discoveries. And then we can go another layer deeper and then we can go another layer deeper. There seems to be, I mean, there really is, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's a formula in Ascension. There's a formula in your healing. It's a progression. And I, I've uh, set up my intensive programs in this progression because you're going through the root causes and then you're going through the root reclamation or the reclaiming of yourself and the alignment. And then you're going into the application and the integration of those. Um, and that's where you really start to flourish. So it's not like it's a conundrum or some unknown, um, uh, you know, puzzle to solve. 
I see it work. I see clients come out really, really successful in their healing and get on their missions and make huge breakthroughs. It's you, but you do need the tools. So if you're not finding it with me and that's okay, you can go to any other, there's lots of great healers, especially right now. Like it seems to be like some of the really good healers on YouTube. I feel like they're coming to the surface and like you're able to discern like, oh wow, maybe I want to work with that person. Maybe I want to work with that person. Maybe I want to go to this retreat. Maybe I want to go take this class. Now is the time to do that. We're being asked to put the tools in our toolbox for our healing on all levels. And this is going to help ground us in our spiritual practice. So when we think of ascension, we think of like, oh, we're up in the 5D. We're floating all around. This is crazy. We're having crazy dreams. There's telepathy. We're getting into our psychic gifts. We're, we're up here. We're floating, you know, and it's like you've got to ground yourself and having some practical tools and routines and um, things that you can, you know, practically apply and exercises that you can do and, um, sort of even just like developing your own daily practices w with your own spirituality. Um, this could be just uh, the practice of like, you know, pulling a couple of oracle cards and burning some sage and that's grounding. It could be just sitting down to watch your YouTube videos at the same time every day. That's grounding. It could be this time you take to read your book or or, or look for new knowledge. Um, that's grounding. It could be the time that you spend out in nature, meditating um, or walking. That's grounding. So, um, and we are being asked to connect with nature. And so if for those of you, this is, in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the great time of year to connect with nature because things are coming into bloom, um, it, the weather's getting warmer, and those of you who have been hermiting or disconnected with nature, now is the time to do that, especially around this new moon. Um, it's going to bring us more clarity, and it's going to help balance out these higher vibrational energies with what we're doing here in the earthly realm. Okay, so I'm sort of, so I hope that's clear. And those of you who do want to check out uh, soul coaching or do an intuitive guidance session with me, you can do that on the Um I'm certainly not here to plug the services, but I just feel like there's so many, I get so many questions when people book sessions and, um, and it's different, you know, not most twin flame healers that are on YouTube, they're not soul coaches. So you might be like, what the heck is that? You know? And so I just, I like to take time every, every so often and explain that. Um, so yeah, so I'll leave it at that. There's an intensive program I'm doing over a weekend in May, uh, May 18th through the 20th. That's available too. Um, <clears throat> and so Let's leave that there. Okay, so those are your tools. This is the advice about finding, if it's not through me, find another teacher or healer, find a class, find, and really look at how you're practicing your spirituality. Are you really delving into your curiosity? Are you really, really searching for answers but and putting your hands on the right tools? Or are you just looking for outcome? Because when you're fixated on outcome, you are not really navigating your ascension journey. And so you'll find yourself kind of staying stuck. Um, so try to let go of that. We're being asked to let go of that right now, especially in this upswing that we're on. Um, anything that's holding us back. I've been some recent themes and sessions of mine have been uh, let go of the looking at the twin flame on social media. Let go of torturing yourself. Let go of... Um, those patterns of attachment, those attachments need to be released right now. So, you know, whether you're driving on the road looking to see your twin flame or you're showing up at the places where he or she is or you're spying on their social media, um, <clears throat> they're saying let that go now because in order to ascend, we're needing to release those attachments, okay? So if that's you, be honest with yourself and say, is this really working for me? Is this helping me in any way? Or is it keeping me stuck? For most of you, it's keeping you stuck. And it's maybe a false way of viewing that we still have some control, right? But when you take your hands off of the steering wheel, you let go of that control, you allow the other person to just do their thing, 
and go fully into your healing and your self, self-focus, um, things will heal and accelerate at a much, that's, that's the iron, that's the irony is that the, Things are going to accelerate much quicker when you take your hands off the wheel. We think if we hold on tighter, okay, then we'll know everything that's going on, and then we'll know when something's going to happen, and then we'll know. But we're not supposed to know that. And the the tighter you hold on, the, the more you're going to strangle the energy, and the more you're going to repel your twin, because it's a negative cord of attachment that keeps twins repelled. It's those negative lines of energy. It's the... It's the needing to control. It's the needing to know. It's the manipulating the energy, whether we're conscious of it or not. Get conscious of it, okay? Um, So what I'm going to do for this, for this new moon reading, is instead of pulling a full spread, I feel guided to just pull some advice cards and pull some from the Ascension deck that I that I have by Diana Cooper. The Ascension cards, um, I feel like, are really important right now because it is the basis of what we are all doing. This is much more than, you know, am I coming into union with my twin flame or not, okay? This is like finding out what you need to get to the next level of your healing. What do you need to know? What tools are you needing? What um, advice can I impart or wisdom can I impart um, to help you and what are we needing to know about the changes that will come over the next two weeks because like as I said this whole month is slated to be a month of change some of you have already gone through that change you've had to let go of things you're leaving things you're um, you're starting anew you're starting new things um, those of you where it's not happening like overnight and it's like a slow transition or process be patient you are being up leveled. Um, there still can be a bit of uh, exhaustion, and you're going to feel that still because there's a lot. Your body, your mind, your energy field is working overtime to up level. So let's pull a few cards here and let, let's just get some advice for the month. Okay. So what they're saying is they're talking about decisions. So this is talking about if you have a decision, a crossroads. Look at that image. If you're at a crossroads, are you listening to your higher self? Are you allowing yourself to be guided? This is a time to really, really tune in and take the path of least resistance that is going to help you get to that next level, okay? Some of you have been going a bit on the lower road, which is a more karmic road, so that you can learn the lessons and so that you can, you know, break through to the next level. And so so it's like one road, I feel like goes this, it's like you're hearing the calling of your highest path and you're just going there, right? And like that's, you. it's going to be a more direct up-leveling. Some of you hear it, resonate with it, but then kind of ignore it, or you want to stay, you, there's something in you or your soul's evolution that you're needing to stay in the lower vibrational energies. You're needing to stay repeating the patterns. You're needing to do that until you can really, really learn it and, and, and really, really break through so that you can free yourself to go to that higher path. So don't make it more difficult than you need to. If you really are tuning in to your soul's calling and what your higher self is telling you, now is the time to listen. I feel like around May 18th, May 19th, which will be about four or five days after the new moon, you are going to be making, well, there's sort of like a big decision in there, okay? So I would say that If some of you haven't already been faced with this, you will be faced with it around the 18th or 19th, okay? And that decision may just be to leave old patterns behind and to choose a new way of being, or it could be a more like literal decision in your 3D life, okay? The other thing that we're being urged to focus on right now is our creativity, And 
our creative endeavors, our mission, our, you know, having fun, playing, allowing our creative spirit to be free. It's a very creative time. And your creativity guides, your joy guides, they're reminding you to be playful. They're reminding you to explore your, your gifts and your talents. Um, for many of you, I, I feel like you're pushing your mission to the, to the next level, okay? And I don't mean to say the word pushing, although I use it all the time, gosh. Um, because it's really, you're not pushing. You're actually aligning with your mission so that you can birth it and so that... Um, this feels like a birthing, and I do feel that with this this message paired with the Taurus energy, it, that that you know we see the butterfly, we see we see the greenery, we see the rainbow. We're we're talking about that your creativity will really be at its height when we connect with nature. Whether you're connecting with nature, then you're coming back and doing something creative, or you're doing something creative out in nature. Um, whether you're just meditating in nature and that's helping you get more creative, whatever it is, this is important. And I feel like those two go hand in hand. Okay. So go to your creative projects this month, be it art, cooking, sewing, decorating, photography, painting. Did I say painting already? Music, dance, um, birthing new ideas, new creative ventures. Um, finding um, new ways to communicate. So, part Taurus also, I want to talk about this, go back and talk about Taurus. Taurus also wants us to be practical. It likes, like, when things are the same. Um, so, if you are of, uh, if you're in, in, you know, if you're of a Taurus, sign, if that's your sign, your astrological sign, you, you probably already know this. You're more um, practical. You're wanting things to be the same. And, you know, Taurus is stubborn. So it, this energy might make us feel like we want to stay where we're at. But even though we're hearing the calling of the up-leveling, it may make us feel like we want to stay in the same routine and not work on those things, right? Because, But they're saying find listen to the higher calling and f explore the new things, but combine that with like a, a grounded routine or a grounded energy, um, rooted in nature. Um, this is not a time to be stuck on old faithful or holding or gripping onto a crutch that hasn't worked for us that has been pulling at us energetically, that um, it's what we're letting go of, what we're needing to make the decision about are the things that aren't working for us anymore. Um, so really, really get clear with yourself about what is what, okay? And when, when you're looking at things and evaluating. I see that we have divine helpers coming in and they're saying that, Victory is coming. So what does victory mean in the Ascension journey? Um, well, I feel like this is talking about just the stars aligning for you, for your creative projects. I feel like it's the um, having the right teachers, healers, meeting your soul tribe over the next few months. A lot of you through May, June, and July will be connecting with your soul tribe. Um, right, like I said, meeting the right teachers and healers. These are also divine helpers sent to you through your guides, helping you to align with the right teachers and tools so that you can, this victory, it's not talking about winning. How do we win in our ascension? We come into alignment. We come into wholeness. We become happy, joyful, grateful, appreciative for this journey. We don't, we no longer detest it. We no longer hate it. We no longer resist it. We no longer are stuck in pain. That's the victory that's here for us. So I feel like the overall message is like it's time to go deeper into our healing and deeper into our creative projects, but in a really happy way. It's just like letting go of all the things that no longer serve us, um, choosing the higher path, getting onto our, our mission and, and getting into our creativity. Um, this is where victory is going to come. And 
the victory could even be union with twin flames. And you'll see that when you do fully surrender and go all the way into your learning and all the way into your healing. Um, and by the way, a lot of you have a negative connotation about going deeper into your healing or going all the way into your healing. Like it's some ugly, dark, deep thing. Um, we all know, including myself, it has been, it can be. But for most of you, you've already, most of you, not all of you, but for most of you, you've already been there. You've already gone through your dark, dark night of the soul. Um, you may have, like, through different layers of purging, you may have gone back there again and again. I don't feel like that's the energy we're moving into. This energy feels right. It feels like just shift and whew, everything's coming for you. Everything. Um... So that's pretty huge. So let's um, let's go over to the Ascension cards and let's just ask what are we needing to know for our Ascension or what tools can help us in our Ascension over the next several weeks in May. Earth, I love it. Yay, because this is what we're talking about with the Earth energy and the Taurus. So it says this card invites you to connect to Lady Gaia the angel in charge of our planet, as well as to Taya, the elemental master of Earth, and his Earth elementals, in, including goblins and pixies. Invoke Master Rakox, I'm sorry, Rakoxki, master of the 11th ray of mysticism, to help you attune to the wisdom of our glorious planet, then listen to its heartbeat. To further expand your consciousness, ask the Earth Dragons to help you connect to Hollow Earth and Lemurian wisdom. Earth loves, nurtures, and welcomes you. So this is a card of joy and celebration. Um, your affirmation that goes along with this card would be, I thank Lady Gaia for inviting me to be on Earth. So some of you feel as though you never belonged here. Right? Like, like there's this feeling of separateness from others, of not belonging, of, you know, being of such a, you know, heavenly level or, uh, you know, maybe your star seeds or your, you know, your empaths that have felt like you haven't fit in. And what we're being asked to do is if we've had any of those feelings in our lives, whether present or in the past, to really, really touch base with those feelings and feel oneness now and feel our connection to earth and feel our purpose here. Okay, very, very, very important. And this is this this card is a 14 card. And I feel like um, this is going to actually the 14th of May is Monday. And then we go into the full moon on uh, Tuesday, the 15th. Um, and I'm sorry, the new moon. And so what I want to say is that I feel like this 14 is like, it's what I asked. I said, what do we need to know for the next few weeks of May? It's like the next two weeks of, of May and starting on the 14th for the second half of May. This is what we're going to need to focus on. It's this being thankful for being here. It's knowing now what our purpose is. Even if we don't know exactly what all the details are, we're having, we're having this, for the first time, many of us are having this ability to say, we belong here. We are one with everyone. It's not. It's no longer this, I don't fit in, or I feel like I don't belong here. And this is also asking us to ground into these energies further through our spiritual practices. A lot of times I hear, I hear the, the perception of, you know, I'm so up here. I don't even feel like I fit in down here. And what they're saying is, yes, you do. That, that whole perception is separation mentality in itself. And so taking the perspective, taking the perspective of, of union consciousness, of, of wholeness, of oneness, which many of you are embracing now, seeing the bigger picture of your ascension, and then learning how to ground into it, like very practically, this is what's going to help you. And you're going to feel very, very, very happy to be here and be having this experience and no longer, like I said, resent it. So that's great. What else do we need to know from the Ascension cards about the energies of the month? Let's ask um, for the Divine Feminine specifically, for the Divine Feminine Ascension for the remainder of May 2018. The Sun. So um, the Sun is the navel chakra of the universe. 
It radiates the divine masculine prin principles unto us. Choosing this card suggests that the universe is calling on you to develop your qualities of decisive action, protecting the vulnerable, rational thinking, courage, and strength. Invoke the sun in order to light up your aura and fill you with renewed enthusiasm for life. This energy will enable you to help everyone feel welcome and empowered, which is an important ascension quality. Your guidance is to fill your aura with brilliant golden light, to be true to yourself, and act decisively today. So this is about, and again, we're getting more clarity through this on the decision card because this is about the masculine rising. This is about our inner our inner divine masculine because it's funny I chose this card for the divine feminines and it's talking about getting your divine your divine masculine skills, qualities, and healthy balance. It's talking about taking decisive action. But in order to do that, you're needing to balance both sides of you, your inner feminine and inner masculine. It's the creative inspiration, you know, and then it's the follow through. It's the action taking. It's the inspired action. Um, so I really feel like that's a beautiful, beautiful message. And, and it's really, really talking about this honoring our inner masculine and how important that is right now. Um, and this has been a theme that's been coming in since my last video. Um, at the beginning of May, which we, we were talking about the divine masculine energy rising and the divine masculine coming into his own instead. And so if you are divine masculine watching this, you know, we're going to ask the cards, what do we need to know for you? But I also feel like this applies for you as well because you're coming into your own now, um, stepping into the fullness of your expression and um, being able to take more concise action towards what you're wanting, what you're desiring, okay? Because that's coming from clarity and authenticity and also in, you know, balancing out your feminine energy, your creation energy. All right, so for the masculine, Lady Nada. So Lady Nada is the twin flame of Jesus' higher self, Sananda. She's the master of the seventh ray of ritual and magic. Ceremonies that call in mighty forces are important, so you are reminded to bring people together to praise great light. Oh, sorry, to raise great light. A priestess in the Temple of Love in Atlantis, Lady Nada, is bringing back ancient healing methods, helping the development of intuition, telepathy, and wisdom, and acting for justice. Your guidance is to trust your spiritual and psychic abilities and use them to help those in need. The affirmation is, I accept and practice my healing, spiritual, and psychic gifts. So this is for the masculine. Masculines, um, because of the way the masculine is balancing his own inner masculine and the way that the feminine is balancing her own inner masculine. Like I said, it's like the two energies have to work together now. So we're seeing overall on the planet a greater balance of masculine and feminine energies and also from within us. So what does that mean? That means that for all of you masculine who have been out of touch with your inner knowing, who have been out of touch with your psychic gifts and out of touch with those spiritual gifts, you're, you're, that's coming into to your um, to, to your periphery now. And that's coming, that's filtering in now. And it's, it's tugging at you. It's calling to you. It's awakening within you. And so masculine is actually coming into a time of being more awake and more in touch with his intuitive gifts. And that's part of his divine feminine balancing out from within. Um, so I really love these messages. I hope that they've been helpful for you. Again, if anyone wants to work in private session with me, you can do so on theillumineguru.com. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your uh, month of May. And I'll be back towards the end of the month when we have the full moon in Sagittarius. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Love to you all. Bye-bye.